Welcome to Port St. Lucie, Florida. Uh, this is Professor Teferro uh, for lesson number two of Belt and Road Strategies. Uh, the uh, Belt and Road Strategies we're going to discuss tonight will be concerned with the maritime route. There are three basic routes in the Belt and Road Initiative. The overland route, uh, the northern overland route, that uh, goes through uh, Russia and the northern part of the EU. Uh, then there's the southern overland route, which uh, goes through Central Asia and winds up in the same place in the EU. Uh, and the third and most likely uh, route to be utilized right away will be the maritime route, uh, which will probably have its origins in the uh, western part of China uh, most likely Hong Kong, Macau, or um, one of those areas. Um, <clears throat> let's assume that uh, you're either a partner or you're not a partner of the Belt and Road Maritime uh, Route. Um, if you are a partner in the Maritime Route, uh, you will be included in countries such as um, South Vietnam, uh, <laughs> It's not South Vietnam anymore, it's Vietnam. Um, and uh, there's Singapore, and you'll be included if you are in Indonesia or Malaysia. Um, you will be included if you're in Sri Lanka or uh, if you're in Djibouti. You will be included if you are in um, Saudi Arabia or any of the Arab states. You will be included if you're in uh, Kenya or any of the African states. Um, you will be included if you are in the EU, um, but not everybody is created equal in all of these places. Some partners will have greater value to China and other partners will have much lesser value to China. Um, be that as it may, uh, the partners in the maritime route will expect to um, have certain economic opportunities that they did not have before partnering with China in the Belt and Road. Conversely, there are countries that are not included in the Belt and Road, such as Australia, Japan, India, um, and several countries along Africa and um, the Saudi Arabian Peninsula. So, uh, and countries within the EU uh, will either have a less or more active part in the Belt and Road. Um, so what will these countries do um, while their market shares are being slowly and sometimes quickly eroded by the Belt and Road? Um, well, uh, you're going to have to formulate a strategy uh, for each of these countries. Um, I will hand them out uh, and there will be companies within these countries as well. And these companies will have the same problems that the countries have. Um, for example, if we take Japan, um, a car company uh, like um, Toyota or Honda, they're going to have more problems with the Belt and Road because they're not part of the Belt and Road. The Belt and Road's not going to include those companies. They're going to be looking for other car companies, for example, German car companies. And that means that the market share of Japanese cars in Asia is going to fall. And German market share of cars is going to increase because they're partners with China for the Belt and Road. It's actually quite simple uh, on, in some ways. And in other ways, uh, you have to look at the big picture. So um, if you're not in the Belt and Road, if you are a country that has been left out, you will have to formulate a new strategy. And uh, how are you going to keep those market shares? That's the bottom line. How are you going to keep your market shares, whether you're a country or a company? You have to keep your market shares. So um, good luck in analyzing your um, team uh, project 
and uh, good luck in analyzing your individual company project when it comes to maintaining company uh, market share. Uh, until next time, uh, this is Professor Teferro from Port St. Lucie, uh, wishing you all a good night. Take care now. Bye-bye.